standards in imparting value based quality education that builds leadership the new generation university founded by and led by professor biswajit patnaik former professor of iim indore and lucknow a widely acclaimed management guru known internationally for his expertise in the domain of human resource management emphasizes learning by experimentation and innovation with a flexible and pragmatic attitude the webinar is planned for 1 hour and so i request all the participant to write their questions in the chat box and we will discuss all these questions in the question answer session at the end today's topic is human transformation with blockchain technology blockchain is a decentralized and secure database built over a secure network used to store data data and relay information blockchain record relay information and transactional data in blocks individual involved in the transactions can remain in anonymous while enjoying security transactional transparency speed and cost efficiency blockchain technology is most simply defined as a decentralized distributed ledger that records the provenances of a digital asset by inherent design the data on the blockchain is unable to be modified which makes it a legitimate disruptor for industries like payments cyber security and healthcare current application of blockchain technology are like follows like banking and finance healthcare media entertainment and gaming manufacturing technological service services insurance and much more from banking and secure communication to healthcare and right share blockchain will have a huge impact on our future society today is filled with uncertainty and trust issues and with valid reasons blockchain technology is the answer for all these chaos now we are fortunate to have with us mr prasanna lohar and a few points about him a few lines about him definitely comes across so right now he is currently practicing digital transformation innovation implementation and architecture orchestration as chief innovation officer at dcb bank during year 2016 to 2021 he has backed more than 50 leadership awards like most influential payment professional top 50 cios now cio stands for combined intelligence objective sub committee top 100 innovative cios Le digital leader of the year top 20 bfsi that is bfsi stands for banking finance services and insurance sector leader he is founding mem member of indian blockchain forum its ecosystem driven program for blockchain adoption through education corporate code of ethics research and accelerator programs in india more than 40 mentors are there in this program he has launched global in innovation program innovation carnival he is a member with various innovation fintech and blockchain forum for example ficci iamai icc iaic in india to create a robust innovation ecosystem in india he has over 21 more than 21 years of industry experience in engineering development product development organizational strategy and governance risk audit compliance management business process management enterprise architecture mobile apps digital transformation fintech e-commerce payment platform and product innovation data science automation augmented reality and virtual reality artificial intelligence and machine learning open stack cloud computing analytics big data iot blockchain ui ux and business development since last 7 years he has visited as many 15 plus cities for innovation exploration 50 plus acad academicia uh, colleges met 5000 plus startup in india attended as many 1000 plus conferences conducted 10 plus hackathons created curated five innovation expo events 
His slogan for life is innovation is his passion, collaboration is his attitude, execution is his action, and architecture is his forte. Now I would like to request Mr. Prasanna Aloha to address the virtual gathering. Hello, am I audible? Sir, yes, sir, you are audible, sir. Yeah, okay, so thank you so much, uh, Professor Ricky. Just a second. Yeah, thank you so much, uh, Professor Ricky, for inviting me here at uh, uh, this blockchain conference, right? So, how long, how much time I can talk? So you can have 20 to 25 minutes of your time. Very good. So I think, friends, uh, uh, quick question for everybody, right? So do you feel that uh, I think most of them cameras are off, huh? so it will be difficult for me to connect everybody, but I'll try to. OK, so friends, uh, do you feel that uh, banking is a uh, necessary? Yes, uh, question is always yes. But do you feel that uh, banking, right, in 2030 will be without branches or something like that? So the answer could be yes, no, right? It all depends upon how we do a lot of innovations, how we'll do a lot of blockchain kind of exercises, right? So what happens typically, typically if you see how many people you use Google Pay, Phone Pay, many of you, right? Or how many of you are aware of a UPI, Unified Payment Interface? How many of you are utilizing a, a, a how many of you are utilizing the uh, wallets? So answer could be yes. So I think Professor Ricky, can everybody start the cameras so that I can connect with uh, everybody and ask uh, uh, in between, say example, there are Sahil. I want it as an interactive session, ma'am. We have allowed them. We have allowed by everybody. They can open their cameras. Yeah, please open up the camera so that we can have a very good discussion today. Otherwise, it's a one way direction of discussion. So. So going ahead, uh, hello. Okay, I will try my best to interact. Uh, going ahead, see what happens every 20 years. You will see some or the other kind of a technology comes. Say example, uh, 1995 internet came in our life, and uh, uh, internet is uh, now commodity. You cannot imagine our any of our uh, any of our any of our business model without internet, right? You have to have an internet, and that's how we move ahead uh, in this whole. Uh, journey. So last 20 years, imagine what all new innovations came in our life. Uh, smartphones, uh, talk about iOS, uh, you talk about a uh, lot of payment ecosystems, ATM interoperability. So every 20 years, we see different kind of innovations comes and those innovations comes with us and stay with us for longer period. Now, if you talk about a blockchain kind of ecosystem, so what internet has provided us a value of a transfer. You can send value from one location to another. You can send messages, right? So gone were those days we used to send inland letters or postcards or uh, I think slowly, slowly your paper based currency also will be vanished. I think if you, if any of you have heard about digital rupee during the budget 2022, right? The budget is being announced by Honorable Finance Minister Sitaraman. So you would have seen that digital rupee is going to be a reality next year. So what is this digital rupee, right? So is it something like a invisible currency? So that that digital rupee is going to be based upon blockchain kind of a technology. But friends, uh, it's a response for everybody, academia, government, accelerators, startups, big tech companies like Infosys and all to come and research around this technology, learn this technology sooner or other so that India becomes a hub of this technology, right? So today, uh, for a software valley, we always say it is a blue chip valley, US, right? Crypto Valley is Switzerland. Green Valley is around Israel. So I think at least blockchain Valley should be around a blockchain uh, India kind of a country, right? So friends, so let's understand. Uh, let's understand how things are. Uh, so this is a, this is a map of a one country called Estonia. Estonia was being uh, was being asked, right? Every citizen in Estonia was being asked to please start your life, right? How how they can start their life by spending Everybody was given 10 euros in 1991. That country was about to get vanished from this global map. And today, Estonia has become a template for any country how to implement blockchain. There are more than there are more than 290 plus use cases of a blockchain in a, in Estonia, right? 
how many use cases are in india hardly 10 to 12 right how much is the population of estonia 8 lakhs maybe less than that right so and we being 100 crore plus uh, people a lot of it companies called tcs infosys wipro what is that they are doing for adoption of a blockchain so estonia had done that thing why not we do it let's forget about estonia dubai dubai recently migrated all of their manual processes onto the blockchain every other process of a blockchain they have so can you imagine no manual interventions no corruptions right because of what technology blockchain so this is where it is very very important now if you have heard about bitcoin rise of bitcoin has happened in year 2009 and how many cryptocurrencies are there today in the world maybe more than 17000 right in 17000 cryptocurrencies how many banks are there 200 maybe 300 right do we need those many cryptocurrencies but the power of this cryptocurrency is that and if you if any of you had studied how money was what was the history of money currency creation coin creation how power has become a powerful technology out there after world war 2 right and how money is being managed by uh, federal uh, federal entity in us and how whole world is dollar right as a stable stable currency now in 2009 when bitcoin came bitcoin has a given a, a threat or bitcoin has a given a challenge to the ongoing banking ecosystem and it has came on time when 2008 so many banks got closed because of a bad economy across the world right okay so that is the power of a bitcoin and the technology behind bitcoin is a blockchain now these days people are utilizing bitcoins and there are so many cryptocurrencies and if you recently last two years back this was being announced right libra and this also vanished but libra which is powered by meta or facebook gives an attention to the world that more than 3 billion people are on facebook and all of a sudden these people start transacting doing their banking with libra so that is also one threat right so there are other problem definitions in the life in the world that more than uh, 2 billion people earn hardly 2 to 2 dollar right 2 to 3 dollars a, a day and these people to be taken care for a better financial inclusion so apart from financial inclusion can you imagine they earn only 1 or 2 dollars a day and they don't have a bank account we are good enough we are blessed enough that we have at least 2 3 4 bank bank accounts right so now going for her this This, if you look at this setting the sustainable goals given by un the end that 193 plus country who are part of this un has to meet these goals if you have heard about atmanirbhar india right or a switch all these are sub project of 17 sustainable goals that is a attention that is a aim or key result areas for every country's prime minister they need to see that by 2030 how meet these goals by all these 193 countries why because today we buy but after 10 years that water also in the bisleri that is a challenge in front of us right health right if you talk about health covid has given a challenge right ki health index is also very very important likewise better financial inclusion better ict less of corruption zero poor everybody should get a good food we should have a clean energy we should have a green finance right all these are our goals today we are learning in colleges today we are earning in working in corporates and what is that we are contributing against these goals is very very important right so now coming back if you have seen this whole future of money starting from bartering physical objects paper money gold cards electronic money and slowly slowly now we are talking about cryptocurrency right slowly you will your money will get transformed from the paper currency to the digital rupee and who will do that blockchain will do that so that's the power of a blockchain of technology so i will not be surprised maybe in a punjab we will have a wheat coin or a, in a sugar cane coin in a maharashtra or milk coin in a gujarat or a sugar solar coin in a rajasthan and all backed by digital rupee right It's very very possible right now what, what is the requirement of a blockchain let's talk about why blockchain is so 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 important why do we say that the cost will be reduced it is more secure and as a ma'am has explained right the data is written in a block right how it is a completely secure it tamper proof nobody can write in or update any of the data what does it mean no corruption of the data at all now look at this diagram wherever say example some of our guests here like uh, mr ashish or arbinda or alaka or 
right? All of these guys have done some kind of a transaction, right? Either on malls or on shopping mall or while buying something or other. This transaction goes to their bank account. Say example, this point of sale is being acquired by ICICI by transaction will go to ICICI bank. And if these guys are utilizing some account of HDFC, finally the transaction reaches to the HDFC bank through MasterCard, Visa and all that. So this whole system is a comprised of so many servers, so much of investment we have done in the Indian banking ecosystems last 40, 50 years. And do we really need that investment? Ideally, no. We can tomorrow build banking like this. Can you imagine? Transactions are going just like a, this is like a Bitcoin network. Is it possible? Technically, it is possible. And if you look at this banking, here there are a lot of disputes. At the time, there are a lot of operations involved in every bank. Uh, there are manual processes. Uh, if a transaction doesn't go through, you have to call to the contact center. All these things are there. And moreover, your cost of a transaction is also huge. So merchant also charges extra additional fees for as a merchant fee. So what Bitcoin says or what a blockchain says that you build your banking on my network. So typically this will be like this and I will offer a lot of other incentives. No disputes, no reconciliation, real time settlement, no manual intervention, no conversion, which is as good as a very powerful, very cheaper banking, right? So as a bank, we have a lot of challenges. We have challenge of data security. We have challenge of a network security. We have challenge of data frauds. We have challenge of identity ecosystem. Everybody has to do same KYC everywhere, right? So all these challenges were in a block. What banks are looking for is a better solution. They are looking for a better solution for a, a multi-party data, right? Now these days banks are col collaborating with a fintechs, just money, credit. You must have heard about Grow. These are powered by banks, and this requires a lot of data integrity between multi-parties, right? So what blockchain says, these are challenges, okay? But I will bring on, I will bring on this solution for you. Single source of a truth. Alter the data. They banking system. Programmable smart contracts. Irreversible traceable. Data security. Multi-party uh, trust needs. Decentralized. Configurable access rights. So more or the less, what blockchain promises? Blockchain promises that our current ecosystem, which requires a trust between two parties, can be evolved, nurtured. Secured with the help of Primary number four aspect, right? To work, right? To better architecture, interoperability. We need a good technology maturity. We need people responsibility of our university. Today I'm being invited, right, in this whole uh, ASBM university. So it's an opportunity for ASBM university. It's an opportunity for professors at ASBM university. It's an opportunity for students at ESB University. They can learn this technology and participate into this uh, people skill, technology maturity, and regulation compliance so that we can see that blockchain is more and more nurtured in the India like a country. So, so, so furthermore, blockchain is a technology, but actually, in case banking ecosystem, when RBI will collaborate with the fintech companies, other banks, and so on, that's the opportunity which we have. So uh, uh, there is a lot to talk about blockchain, right? So uh, if you look at more than more than uh, 20, 30 banks in the world, they are working on blockchain. More than 60 banks are working on a digital rupee kind of a central bank digital currency, right? We often spend a lot of time in a cross-border payment that can be resolved with the help of a blockchain kind of a technology, right? So so blockchain is a, something like a, what internet have not done with us, right? And all the challenges which internet can be nurtured by the blockchain. I, if you look at this slide, it's called as a blockchain fit assessment framework. How do we assess? How do we come up with the use cases of a blockchain? Wherever there are more than two parties, go for blockchain. Wherever there is a manual work, go for blockchain. Like real estate buy and sale, right? Land registrations. Or you talk about AML or KYC kind of a use cases. You talk about uh, there is an agreement between tenant and uh, tenant and the uh, owner. Go for a blockchain, right? So wherever you need automation need, blockchain is the answer for that, right? This slide helps us to understand what all systems will go on a blockchain tomorrow. So I'll just conclude with my address by saying there are every system which is available today. We go ahead and have a blockchain in their journey journey. 
today we are talking about blockchain. In 1995 up to 2000, we used to talk about internet. We used to talk about e-commerce side. We used to talk about email. We used to talk about uh, uh, various those Bazi.com and so many other things. Today we talk about that. No, we talk about only use cases, uh, website, internet. Similarly, after five years, after 10 years, we'll not talk about blockchain. We'll talk about our new use cases will come. So these are all some of the use cases of a blockchain. Cross-border payment will go on blockchain. You talk about the less KYC. Say example, we have a uh, doing a KYC with the bank SDFs. Same KYC he can use to Bank of Baroda, provided it comes on blockchain. So blockchain is a decentralized ecosystem. All these banks will share the same data in a secure way. That is always the power so that you can see this use case, which I'm talking about a uh, decentralized KYC. Then central bank digital currency, which uh, recently finance minister announced, right? There are more than 60 banks are working on it. NFT, non-fungible tokens, DeFi, which is a parallel banking, which is a non-regulated banking. Your Aadhaar is going to go on the blockchain tomorrow. Trade finance, which is a sitting of so much of corruption, manual process across so many countries will come on blockchain. Your security, compliance and security will be on blockchain. All of your record keeping, records in colleges, government offices, uh, banks will be slowly, slowly will go, go on to the blockchain. Syndicated lending, there are more than two stakeholders, two banks give a loan to a guy, will go on blockchain. Likewise, every ecosystem will go on blockchain to reduce the frauds. We'll have a better regu regulatory requirements, right? So, so there are so many. So this is a time now for everybody to see which are all the use cases we can build. So this is something, some example of a decentralized uh, video KYC. To DCP bank reading case, the video KYC, a digilocker, Aadhaar, and a sense KYC. This can be utilized from a bank. Other bank, you just have to. Uh, tomorrow, our university, our our ASBM university can can provide uh, all the passing certificate. Every chain, and we can just imagine more simpler collection list. And very peaceful with their own blockchain. So I think it's a it's a high time for all of us to understand blockchain functionally, technically, regulatory angles. And I think I propose at a ABS, sorry, uh, ASBM University, we should start smaller a blockchain course for professors, blockchain course for students, so that college knows this technology all about, right? So tomorrow when students will pass out, they should not feel like we are not studied blockchain in detail. There are a lot many operating systems of blockchain, just like we have a Microsoft Windows and Unix. We have a Hyperledger, Ethereum, so many to be studied. So there is a lot to do in the ecosystem. So these are all the use cases which we work. So these are all different operating systems, Ethereum, Hyperledger, R3, consensus, uh, uh, Quorum, Likewise, I know some of the startups, they are going to come up with their own operating systems of blockchain. It's, it's a issue, research around to come up with the, the and just about the use cases as the different, different uh, uh, blockchain fabrics and so on. So I think, friend, just uh, there are a lot of blockchain required because in identity. There are a lot of cases. There are a lot of some there are a lot of thoughts where uh, people send a link to the email and uh, wipe out your, your bank account. Right? So all these frauds. Hello. Hello. Yeah, so there are a lot many. Use yeah, hello. Hello, I can hear you. Yeah, is there anybody, anybody said something, I guess? I was talking about. Uh, Dr. Mahmood, we are visible and audible, okay? Yeah. Uh, Thanks, uh, sir, sir, who invented this, sir, blockchain? Hello. Yeah, hello. Participants to answer a question. Uh, a question uh, are experts only after the session is open. Okay, 
kindly please write your questions on the chat box and so that i can uh, you know speak to the experts about it yeah so i think uh, uh, professor ricky uh, in the interest of time i stop here so that our other speaker well, can uh, provide his uh, input okay sir we'll have a question or a question answer round sir so kindly please wait yeah, okay. for that particular round we'll definitely ask questions to you sir yeah okay thank you so much thank you so much sir for your uh, valuable input sir i would now uh, i would now request our uh, uh, professor uh, and we are privileged to have have him is currently professor in computer science department at princess sumaya university of technology that is in amman and jordan he is also heading the prestigious action project as action project manager before joining in princess sumaya university of technology professor albahan had held the position as professor in the computer science department at muta university from the year 2015 till 2021 he was founder dean of information technology at zera university between the year 2009 till 2015 as well as within that time period he has also served as a head of computer science department zera university from the year 2010 till 2011 dr mohammad albahan had quality papers published in reputed international journals chapters and conferences his research areas include the following quality of service in wireless and mobile network lightweight cryptography for iot that is internet of things in artificial intelligence integration for information and network security distributed ledger technology that we all know as blockchain technology hyperledger fabric user security and privacy authentication protocol verification frameworks decentralized digital identification that is did i welcome you sir to asbm university and to this webinar thank you very much for joining us today well thank you very much uh, professor ricky for uh, inviting me and for this uh, introduction and it's a pleasure uh, to be with you guys and uh, thank you uh, professor for your great presentation it was a pleasure to uh, hear your presentation and i'm sorry for the uh, technical problem um i will start just uh, straight away to share my uh, screen with the presentation Okay, is it clear the presentation? Is it? Uh, can you see it? Okay. Yes, yes, it's visible. Okay. Um, so, uh, with regard to our topic today, I will um, actually my presentation will be how we can utilize uh, blockchain technology for transforming education. And uh, in this concern, I will actually focus on uh, one of the uh, uh, early stage projects in Jordan, which is AC Chain, which actually stands for uh, Jordan Academic Blockchain Network. just um, as my colleague now he presented a uh, general overview about blockchain and uh, its uh, current status in countries um, unfortunately in jordan we are still uh, not very uh, let me say not utilizing this technology in a proper manner and there is no uh, official or there is no standard for utilizing this technology um, either even uh, at the government side or at the uh, Uh, at the private uh, side so we have established me and saw a, a group of researchers we established this project and this project is funded by uh, the ministry of higher education and 
<clears throat> we we will talk about the details of uh, what are the stages of this this project through this presentation. So let me just go through the outline of uh, <clears throat> uh, of my uh, presentation here. Um, the first uh, part of the presentation, I was planning actually to uh, give some brief introduction about blockchain technology, defining this technology, its properties, components. However, I will just go through it quickly because my colleague and uh, Professor Ricky, she just actually uh, provided uh, such uh, details. And the second part, I will talk and focus about how we can use this technology to transform education and our personal expertise with the AC chain uh, project. So as we all know, blockchain is a distributed ledger uh, technology. It's um, a, a distributed database where you actually store encrypted uh, data and transactions in uh, different nodes uh, described as uh, we say peers. And um, just to go through uh, what are the advantages of this technology, um, security, all records uh, are encrypted, anonymous, all participants will be pseudonymous where you can actually uh, deal with data with anonymity of uh, identity. Immutable records are actually uh, irreversible because of the use of uh, the hash values and the chaining uh, process itself. Also, it's time stamped where every transaction is recorded based on time. Distributed, a record of all data is distributed among all uh, peers and efficiency and speed because we have this uh, model of uh, distribution and we have this model of uh, all data is stored in uh, different uh, locations so there will be no intermediary and this will increase the efficiency and will increase the reliability so these are the major advantages of blockchain technology which can actually benefit all sectors uh, finance, education, gaming, uh, food, uh, uh, supply chain, any sort of uh, in, uh, industry will actually uh, benefit from such advantages. And accountability, of course, um, I will focus on this in my second part of the presentation where we actually uh, operate based on uh, permission the blockchain network. Components of the blockchain, we have the node, the node is a user or a, or a computer within the blockchain. The transaction, the transaction is the smallest uh, building block of the blockchain. Um, the block itself, the block is the data structure where you actually store the transaction and you store the uh, data. Um, the chain, the chain is the process of how you connect such uh, uh, blocks together. Most likely it's a process of uh, hashing and connecting hash values the miners are nodes which you actually which are responsible for the verification uh, and synchronization of these products the consist is a set of rules or protocols that actually responsible for keeping this ledger synchronized and the final point is the smart contract smart contract is a computer program where you actually uh, is responsible for the automation so i just uh, here uh, uh, pointed out some of the uh, main components of the blockchain so we all have the full picture of uh, the, uh, the the whole architecture of this of this technology so okay so now coming into the second part of the presentation which is actually how we can use this technology to transform the education Let's um, point out three major advantages of three major points. Uh, we can use blockchain uh, to uh, uh, enhance the, the uh, safety nest and the credibility of the learning environment. I will talk about this later on. Um, we can use it for uh, managing the educational resources in a better automated way. We can also use it for uh, increasing the efficiency and increasing the uh, privacy of uh, data and the efficiency of data processing actually at the educational institutions. Who can utilize this technology? The stakeholders of this technology in the education, everyone actually, the institution itself, uh, the accreditation uh, agencies, the employers, students, teachers, 
everyone who is actually participating in the educational environment can actually benefit from this uh, technology. So um, it, it will increase privacy of, uh, of users. It will increase uh, efficiency of uh, the institutions. Um, it will increase the credibility. Uh, it will actually uh, uh, reduce the manual process. It will also uh, increase or reduce any uh, frauded uh, documents that can actually uh, take place in the uh, uh, educational environment. Cool. Okay. Hello. Excuse me, ma'am. Please. Sir, can continue, sir. Please, so, sir. Please continue. Yes. So, I will start by uh, now the second part, which is AC chain. As I explained earlier, AC chain. Uh, is the first Jordanian blockchain project uh, which is funded by the government and uh, I was lucky to uh, manage this project and we are still on the first uh, stage where we actually are now onboarding uh, uh, academic institutions into their project. AC chain is actually um, a network uh, solution based on blockchain technology and it's focused towards securing the digital credentials at uh, our universities in Jordan. We will be also we will also uh, be part of uh, the uh, verification process of the academics and of the students. And uh, we will the project will also focus into the uh, issuance of uh, credentials such as transcripts, certificates uh, of and any official letter that the university actually uh, assign. And the full connectivity of these universities will go through the uh, will go through the uh, uh, Ministry of Higher Education. So this is a, a brief introduction about uh, our project. So as I mentioned, AC Chain is a network solution aiming to position DLT technology in the academic and financial industries and uh, to be used for publishing and verifying credentials and transactions securely in the cyberspace. This is just a general um, uh, aim and objective of AC chain. It will consist actually of four modules. Uh, the first one is AC issuer, AC verify, AC wallet and AC hub. AC issuer is the module responsible for issuing verifiable credentials. What I mean by verifiable credentials is that any certificate or any document that is issued by our by the, the university or by the institution can be verified electronically via the blockchain technology. So uh, these two modules actually AC issue or AC verify will operate uh, together and uh, AC wallet is a mobile solution where all academic credentials will be uh, transferred and it can be used for um, it can be used for uh, uh, enrollment, onboarding for the users and for authentication of the users. AC Hub is actually a, a smart learning uh, environment where we will connect all these modules to the legacy system of the university where the blockchain will actually be part of the, uh, the internal system of each institution. OK, what is the problem that we are actually tackling now through this project? First of all, a national standard and expertise for implementing blockchain technology in Jordan does not exist. So this is the first problem we are tackling through our project. We need to set up a national standard. We need to build up expertise so we can actually utilize this technology in a proper way. The second issue or problem we are tackling is how to issue and share and verify the documents and these credentials in a secure and non-problematic -prob uh, 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 manner in a secure and private uh, environment. So this is the second issue. Issuance of credentials. Also, uh, uh, we will um, tackle the, the high cost of manual issuance the, uh, uh, and any security concern regarding the issuance of these documents. We have mainly three stakeholders in our system. We have the issuer who is any institution who wants to issue a document. 
and the recipients who is the students or employer or the teacher who actually re receives these documents and the recipients he can share these documents to the verifier the verifier, the verifier can relay on ac chain network either in jordan or, or outside jordan to make sure that this document is verified right? if i provide just a quick use case example for example, when a student graduated from a university, he will get a certificate. This certificate will have will be stamped, will be signed, and will we, it might include also a QR code. It depends on the on the system that is operated at the university. And um, he needs, for example, to study abroad in the United States or uh, any other place. So this uh, certificate needs to go through several accreditation and several verification processes in order for the university to verify this uh, document. So we, we are try and there are some uh, manual process uh, 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 in between this uh, this this cycle and there are lots there might happen lots of uh, lots of uh, frauds and lots of problems. So we are aiming to automate this process and to make it uh, secure using the blockchain uh, technology. So this is a quick overview of the scenario. What is the solution for all these problems? The solution we are proposing, and we are actually now implementing, we are in the stage of implementing the solution, which is a permissioned blockchain network. As we all know, maybe Professor uh, in his speech, he, he uh, uh, talked about Bitcoin and Ethereum. We have actually two type of, of uh, blockchain uh, technologies. The first type is public blockchain networks. Public blockchain networks such as uh, Bitcoin and Ethereum and some other uh, 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 technologies where you actually can implement your own solution uh, using these uh, technologies. It's an open source technology where you can actually implement your, uh, your solution or your uh, digital currency uh, based on these technologies. However, the second part is, is private blockchain network. Private means that in order for you to utilize this technology to be part of the network, you need to have permission from the service provider, okay, from the owner. And this permission, um, this and this type of, of uh, network, uh, this type of technology is actually, uh, in terms of performance, it's higher performance because uh, we have limited number of nodes who actually participate in the technology. Also, it's uh, there is a procedure of onboarding and including the nodes. It's, it's, no, it's not open. It's not open. And I believe this is the, uh, the standard that governments are operating based because when you are actually including banks in the technology in the, uh, and you are including governmental uh, institutions, you cannot actually operate based on Bitcoin or based on Ethereum. So um, it is actually recommended in terms of performance, efficiency and security to use a permissioned blockchain network. And this permission blockchain network, it's based on Hyperledger Fabric technology, where you actually can build your own uh, block blockchain technology platform. So we actually went through this uh, uh, track. Uh, it's a bit difficult. However, it's uh, it's more convincing for our potential customers that we own the network. We don't operate based on Bitcoin or Ethereum. So what we have done is that we have started our uh, 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 development of a permissioned blockchain network based on Hyperledger Fabric. And we are now actually uh, utilizing this technology to build the back end of our solution. And um, fortunately, things are going uh, straight and uh, we will actually have uh, the solution ready by end of uh, uh, April. So using this permission blockchain network, we can actually provide a permission for uh, any institution to be onboarded inside the network. Any institution who is onboarded, uh, it goes through a process and then uh, we will, uh, they will utilize this technology to uh, issue their credentials, issue their documents, verify their credentials, verify their documents through this technology. So what are the uh, value propositions or, or what are the uh, added value of AC chain for uh, individuals and for institutions? For individuals, 
transparency, simplicity, and uh, reduced cost. Also, a global identity. There will be global academic identity. Their documents will be accredited and verified globally. And for institutions who will actually be part of the network, we will actually have reduced overhead and cost for them. Um, configuration and controllable products. I mean here products are the uh, credentials, reliability and trust, decentralized and redundancy, and smart support of smart environments, learning environments. So these are the advantages for both uh, systems. Um, what is the applicability of our system? Uh, where can it can be applied? Any institution who issues documents. Okay, maybe my colleague here he just mentioned about uh, Dubai uh, uh, government. They actually uh, uh, all their uh, governmental transactions, all uh, institutions who issue documents, it's going through the uh, blockchain technology. Okay. So any any governmental, any private, either university, finance bank, any institution who issues document can be an issuer here. The second part is the recipients. The recipients, any user who use documents, OK? Uh, any citizen, we can, he can be actually a, a, a recipient of our system. The last part is the verifier. Verifier, OK, verifier is actually uh, who uh, uh, who is using this documents. For example, the employer or the university or the government side, any side who can actually uh, utilize this document. So these three stakeholders can be any institution, any recipients or any user or any user who uses this document. All this, all these stakeholders are connected via the DLT network, OK? Our applicability here, we focused into the uh, we focus into the education. We want to reduce manual efforts in education. We want to streamline the automation of document issuance, and we want to increase the lo loyalty of students into their institutions by having their credentials available and verifiable everywhere. For employees, employees will gain knowledge. Employees will increase their engagement, and employees will be having more extra skills. Now I'll just go through how we operate. We operate based on, uh, for the AC issuer, we operate based on two uh, uh, modules. The first module is the native uh, module with, where we actually, um, where we actually uh, issue the uh, documents from scratch. Um, issuing documents from scratch, meaning that we will uh, issue the, 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 the uh, initial a version of the document based on the data and based on the uh, graphical design that uh, is available uh, for us. And then we actually perform the hashing and the encryption, and then we the final stage will be the uh, producing the verifiable document. Now this verifiable document will include, will be encrypted, will be hashed, and will include uh, general identification on it where we actually can send to all uh, uh, to the recipients. Before we send it, we actually authenticate the user himself that this user is the legitimate user to receive this document. Issuance option number two, where we actually not issue the document natively from scratch, we utilize the PDF version available at the uh, institution. Because I believe most of uh, uh, institutions, they have PDF versions uh, ready and available. So we take this PDF version and we perform our uh, uh, processing on this PDF version, and then we uh, uh, convert this PDF version into a verifiable blockchain uh, credential. This is option number two. Now, uh, using verification, our system, you can actually, uh, as a, if you want to verify the document, you can use the QR code on the document. You can use the document itself as a PDF version because some old documents will not have uh, already any global identification. Uh, you can use a link and uh, the system will actually provide us uh, uh, with the uh, result of verification if it's revocated or if it's uh, valid or it's not valid if it's uh, it was uh, changed or edited and so on. 
So uh, this is the verification side. Now, in terms of verification, what um, questions we answer? The first question is the issuer a legitimate issuing organization. Let me here just quickly address this. We actually authenticate and legalize the issuer and the uh, document itself and the receiver. So all three sides. We operate, we operate in all the, the uh, three sides. The issuer, which is the organization or university, we legitimize, we uh, 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 verify it and authenticate it. We also, the receiver of the document, the, the student or the employer or the citizen, it depends on the application of our system. We verify this user and also we verify the document. We authenticate and encrypt and hash and link the document to our system. So all three sides, we have the full picture of security utilizing the system. So this is the questions and answers uh, here in this slide. Now, uh, the data handling, what type of data? We have data stored off chain and we have data stored uh, on the blockchain network. On the blockchain network, we only store hash values and we only store keys. We don't, uh, not even keys, we only store hash values. We don't store uh, uh, personal identifiable uh, data and we don't store the PDF versions of the documents. So. All these documents and all these personal identifiable data are stored on premises, okay, are stored within the university. On the chain network, we just store the chaining data, okay, the data that is responsible for verification. So this message is also uh, very important for uh, any potential participant in our project that we don't know, we don't store the data, we only store hash values and these hash values will uh, not be actually uh, traced or it cannot be reverted to uh, original uh, uh, data. So um, mainly features that we provide a complete credential lifecycle management, scheduling, publishing, revoking, expiration of documents, issue anything to anyone. We can issue any documents to any uh, recipients, uh, issue at the scale, you can issue thousands and thousands of documents uh, straight away. Documents will be digitally signed using the PKI infrastructure, the public uh, key infrastructure itself between the institution and between the participant will be signed and uh, verified. Strong authentication uh, methods will be used for uh, the users to uh, factor authentication and uh, there will be multiple interfaces because you know we have English and Arabic uh, languages uh, and certificates, so we support Arabic certificates and English certificates, and it's actually a challenge to, to support uh, uh, um, uh, Arabic uh, certificates. Also, we aim to be compliant with data protection laws that uh, one of the major law, law uh, 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 it's uh, the right to be forgotten, that uh, students, when they, uh, there's some uh, rights for anyone who actually have documents in the government side to be forgotten, so blockchain supports and our system, which is AC chain, supports this um, uh, this rule. Just a quick high-level architecture of uh, our system. For example, here we can see that any institution that is onboarded into the network will have uh, uh, will have its uh, block within our uh, network and because it's because it's a blockchain uh, it's a, a private blockchain network we will also uh, depend on one uh, order or node okay will uh, which will actually perform the time stamping of the network each university will have its off chain and uh, on chain uh, blocks to be actually part of the network and here i am summarizing what actually uh, we have uh, within the uh, within the network itself. So uh, this is just a high level architecture of our AC chain network. Um, and the data requirements, I already mentioned the native data generation and the uh, external data generation of uh, the uh, system. So um, thank you very much. This is a quick overview of our project. I just, uh, you know, wanted to um, 
give you guys some of our uh, real projects going on in Jordan with regard to blockchain technology. And uh, I hope that maybe at end of April we can meet again and I can show you some of our uh, results, uh, our live results implemented uh, in uh, the uh, universities in Jordan. Thank you very much. And if there's any question, I am ready. So now I would like to request, uh, I would thank, now I want to thank uh, sir for your valuable ins insights of this topic. Thank you very much sir for joining today. Now I'd like to open the forum for the question answer round. I would like to first ask question sir, uh, Mohammed, uh, Professor Mohammed uh, Albahan. Yes. Uh, what, is an, uh, what is institution onboarding procedure of ActChain? Well, um, basically, we, we visit the institution. All, all institutions are invited to join AC Chain because this, is, uh, uh, this project is funded by the uh, uh, Ministry of Higher Education. And they actually announced that we want all universities to be part of the project. So we visit the university. Uh, we actually uh, uh, understand the uh, systems, the system architecture at the university. We sit with the um, director of IT, the director of registration, and we analyze all these uh, uh, problems they are having of issuing of, of issuing their documents. We understand what is the issuing uh, process. We understand their uh, technical uh, uh, infrastructure. And based on that, we propose them uh, what is the best module for onboarding them into the uh, into the system. One of the major onboarding uh, uh, questions that we need to define what are the documents that are higher that have high values at this institution uh, that they wanted to be part of the uh, blockchain network. Most universities, the highest value they have is the certificate transcripts and student, uh, verific student uh, enrollment uh, letters. So we analyze these documents and we build a data model based on these documents and we discuss this data model for each institution. Once we receive and uh, we match an agreement between them, we then define how this data model will be implemented and how it's integrated within our system. So this is a full procedure of how we onboard any institution. So uh, uh, can we? Uh, can I ask you one more question, sir? How how you yes. decide suitable issuer model at each institution? Yes, well, this this is a very important question because um, it is uh, it is based on the onboarding process itself. For example, um, we are now implementing the system at uh, Jordan University, which is the biggest university in Jordan. Maybe we have around 70,000 students uh, uh, enrolled now. However, however, they have they have a system that is um, based on Oracle, for example, the, their, their legacy system is Oracle system, where they uh, produce uh, the reports of the certificate and then they print it uh, using uh, a normal printer. So based on the analysis we, we defined, based on the database normalization, based on the problems they have, we decided to go to the native. The native a process we build the document from scratch and this uh, this have this will have more overhead on us as AC chain team however is the suitable uh, uh, design for uh, this case however in new universities in new institutions they have um, new versions of uh, 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 registration systems let me say and um, they produce pdf documents in a in, in a good shape so at these institutions, we utilize the external issuer model because we just take it as PDF and operate on PDF. So this is how uh, we decide the issuance model, which is uh, appropriate for any institution. So there is a general question I like you to ask uh, one of our uh, members of the you know people who have meeting this chat. Uh, he has chatted if, if more users join blockchain, the network tends to slow down. There is need to. Well, 
Well, that's yeah. why that's why oh. I have mentioned in my my uh, first presentation, the beginning of my presentation, is that we are here operated based on private blockchain network, not public. This is a problem of public blockchain. We are private, meaning that we are developing. We are developing our private network. No one can actually add it to the network unless we on board and we allow and give permission for this user. Now, where is the performance challenge? When you have billions of users, for example, Bitcoin, we have millions, millions of users and it's still it's operating. There's no much bigger problem in, in efficiency and performance. However, in our case, in AC chain, it's a private network. We might add the most maximum scenario. We might have 100 of, of participants. So the, the performance will not be an issue in our case. Thank you, sir. But one more question arises. If the increasing, if there is an increase in speed of processing, there must be a uh, huge transaction fees for it? Well, yes, yes. Well, for well, for our business model, let me say that um, we operate based on transactional uh, fees, and um, this transactional fees, if actually uh, number and uh, the number of transaction will increase, the fees will increase. So uh, it should this fees increase should accommodate any processing cost that uh, accompanied with this increase of transactions. So we we aim that transactions will be uh, will be increased. Uh, uh, every day because uh, this way the, the income for us will be increased and this will give us more money to buy more uh, powerful PCs and uh, virtual machines to implement our system. So it's something that, uh, you know, works parallelly. Yes. Sir, uh, now I'd like to ask uh, our uh, next eminent speaker, uh, Mr. Prasan Lohar, if he is there, please, sir. Uh, there's a question for you, sir. Prasan Loha, sir. Are you there, sir? Sir, are you there? Sir, can you please come up? Uh, there's lots of questions here for you, sir. Uh, I think Sar is inactive. Okay. I, am, I, I do not see Sar present in the list. Maybe some network okay. issue, maybe. Might be. You can continue with further things. Okay. And uh, Madam, kindly please stop the presentation. I think you have uh, by mistake presented something. Sir, may I ask you one more question to you, sir? Um, yes. Professor uh, Mohammed Albahan. Sir, uh, are there any live and real cases for blockchain in the world? Well, yes, of course. Yes, there is, uh, you know, starting from uh, cryptocurrencies, going through uh, the supply chain management of uh, agriculture industries and uh, financial industries where uh, you actually uh, 
use blockchain for uh, managing the transactions and uh, education. Uh, E-government, most E-government uh, uh, projects and solutions nowadays are actually implementing blockchain technology. In Jordan now, uh, I just explained to you uh, AC Chain, which is the uh, academic blockchain network in Jordan. It's a live uh, application of this technology and uh, uh, that's why I I'm, I'm, I focused my presentation on it because it's uh, it's something coming into reality in a couple of months, and it's okay, uh, sir. going. To... Sorry, sir. Yes. Sorry, sir. Sorry, sir. Please continue. Yes. So my answer is yes. There is lots of uh, real time applications of this technology, and it's growing. Also, we need here. Uh, um, um, can you just please give me uh, 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 an overview of the audience? Uh, do we have students uh, uh, listening to us? Graduate students who are actually interested in research. Students still listening to you, sir. Graduate students are there, sir. Yes. Sir. So that's why that's why uh, this is a very good example because if they are uh, aiming to uh, do some research on uh, security or privacy of information. So actually, uh, uh, blockchain technology should be part of their research. And um, we also, blockchain technology is not uh, away from other technologies such as artificial intelligence. Because uh, when we when we want to talk about um, distributed verification of, of, uh, of users, you here uh, you can use the blockchain technology for storing the data for uh, securing the data however how you can actually verify the users if you don't have an ai engine a machine learning engine who can actually um, use this data for uh, extracting and also there's a very interesting uh, field which actually goes directly with blockchain technology which is federated learning federated learning is part of uh, the uh, 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 AI, it's under the AI umbrella, it's under the machine learning umbrella where you can actually operate based on distributed data models, not uh, uh, a data model which is in one location. And this federated uh, uh, learning, it is basically based on blockchain. Uh, it goes and fits exactly with the blockchain. So I'll, all, all, all the way I um, support my students to uh, tackle uh, this area of how we integrate uh, in artificial intelligence, more especially the federated learning with the blockchain to come up with a new intelligent and cutting edge uh, research uh, uh, projects. Uh, and um, I just wanted to highlight these, um, you know, uh, fields of research for uh, the students who are actually listening. And um, yeah, thank you. Sir, as the session is going to the end uh, uh, portion, I would have uh, loved to have Prasanna uh, Lohar, sir. But I think he is actually uh, logged out and uh, he'll be joining. If he joins, uh, we cannot go forward. So we will end up the situation over here, question answer round here. If any questions uh, uh, is there with the participants, you can ask now because uh, this is a position where we are actually going to uh, end. So if anyone wants to ask question, we can give two minutes of time to ask question. Uh, no, no more uh, questions, ma'am. Uh, I think it is time up also. So sir, can you please share up. the feedback for, uh, for feedback link, sir? Kindly please. Yes, sir. We, we, will, we will mail them. Already I have written in the chat box. Yes. OK, OK. I had got it. There is a feedback link over there provided by me. Kindly please uh, give your feedback there. And we'll be sending with the mail IDs also to you all, the participants, the feedback form, so that we can uh, re reach you as soon as possible. Coming to the end of the particular session, I'd like to uh, express my vote of thanks. Uh, now, coming to the end of the webinar, I must convey my thanks to our 
panel members dr mohammad albahan and mr prasann lohar for their presence and impressive speech on this topic thank you very much sir for accepting our invitation to grace this i must Your convey my special thanks to our president and founder professor biswajit patnaik vice chancellor professor kalyan shankar re and pro vice chancellor professor falguni niranjana of asbm university for their constant support and standing behind us to make the program a successful one i convey my thanks to the webinar team for their support to make this team true last but not least i convey my thanks to all the participants for their cooperation and patience hearing thank you very much to all the participants thank you very much and goodbye i will now end the session formally Thank you.